Yes, you can. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Family Campfire. We are uh, now live with Joe Toe, the one and only Two-Tone Joe from YouTube and from Two-Tone Joe on Facebook, uh, as well as other Facebook groups that he's a member of. I think there's probably close to 100 of them, knowing as popular as he is. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, it's going to be a great night. Um, we also have Josh Kimmel from Beyond Sight and Sound and Swansea Searcher from all the above Facebook groups that were mentioned. We um, It's going to be an awesome show. I do want to start off uh, the one and only time we're going to mention this this evening. Um, we did have a loss in the community earlier this week or about a week ago that uh, really hit a lot of people really hard. Uh, I just want to take a few moments, uh, have a moment of silence for N.C. Digger and for everybody to remember uh, his wife Sandy and their family and their prayers and hopefully they can uh, they can have the strength to get through this. But we'll have a moment of silence now. All right. Now that that's out of the way, let's uh, let's get down to having some fun and talking about some digging. Um, Josh, if you want to start off with questions, I'll let you start. And if you guys out in the external have any questions while we're talking, type them in the external and we'll get them asked. Yeah, hopefully uh, you got the the short guy there keeping an eye on the questions in the external. Yeah, the, the short fat guy has that covered. <laughs> well, I've always got something to say, it seems like, but I guess first off would be it's uh, certainly nice to be able to sit down and chat again, Joe. Uh, good to talk to you again. Good to see you again. Uh, everybody hey, like had a grand time at the hunt. Oh, yeah. That was such a good time. Uh, hats off to Sam and Jeff and uh, everybody else who was part of planning that and I think it went great. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, how long have you been in the hobby now? Um, it's been three years. So I'm, you know, always learning every day. So, you know, right. I've been in it long, that's for sure. So it, and quite the popular person in the hobby, too, I might add. <laughs> I got a small channel compared to some of the uh, professional YouTubers you've had on here. So, but I I just do my thing and make videos and just love to show what I find and love the history about it. You know, so. Well, I think that's that's an important aspect of it too, though. Even in your videos, you always seem to uh, find the best in it. You know, uh, always having a good time with it, happy with what you found, and yeah. Uh, yeah. It, giving a backstory to everything too, kind of a, a little bit of a background on the property that you're hunting or how you came to be at that particular property. Um, are you talking about the one I'm at now, or the one? Well, the the uh, most recent video you uploaded was uh, very well done. Of course, they're oh, all thanks. well done. <laughs> Thank you. That that was a uh, um, that was just an awesome property. I still have permission there. Uh, it's it's a big property. It's like 52 acres, but uh, it belonged to the Curtis family, who um, were uh, pretty close to being part of the you know some of the original settlers, and and they uh, started uh, an inn in town, and uh, they had you know a lot of people came through there uh, uh, early what was it mid mid 1800s early to mid 1800s and uh, stayed there. But anyways, the property has a huge mansion on it, um, and then two other homes that were built prior to the mansion, as I explained in the video. Um, those were used for people who were building the mansion. So. Um, yeah, I believe uh, what like seven to ten years prior to that. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's the, the history I got from the people who live there, who uh, in the medium-sized home. Uh, those people are actual Curtis, uh, Curtis last name. So, 
um, actual family members, and then the people they rent to other people, the smaller one, what also equally is old. I have yet to hit that yard also, and I'd love to. So, And I think they're really nice people. I haven't really asked them personally, but they're always you know, liking to see what I find, so I'm sure they'll let me. Right. And uh, I guess since, since we're on to the subject of the area there, uh, how is it that you came to find this location? Did you look it up on a map? Did, were you just out driving around and, oh, hey, that looks nice. I'll stop there. Um, well, the area I'm from, uh, it's not, it's not, uh, it's small, but, uh, people knew about this mansion, uh, knew about the family. It's kind of like a known place, but, um, known place just within the town. So I don't think anybody's ever really detected it. Um, but yeah, I was told that somebody did detect the front yard of the uh, medium sized home though. And I think it was the owner for the one now, his father, um, but I wasn't sure about that. But there, there wasn't that much found in front, in front, in the front of that house. So. Yeah, I do recall you mentioning in the video that you thought it had either been hunted or had Phil brought in. Yeah, so um, I, I didn't find, I, and I dug everything. I didn't find anything there. Like I found one wheat penny and uh, like foil and uh, pop tabs. It was just like empty. But then I went right. in the field, and then back, back in the grove, um, and that's where I started finding stuff. So, right, uh, the coppers weren't uh, coming out of the ground very well there. Yeah, no, they they weren't not not uh, um, not not as good as they should have been. You you would think it wouldn't be too bad there, but then in that field it was a uh, um, orchard, and I think they they might have put a uh, uh, treatment down on there, and that's what probably ruins the coins. That's the only thing I can think of. Unless it makes ground, sense. Yeah, unless the ground is naturally just like that, you know, very acidic or very, you know, on the other end. Uh, that's always possible, but having the past has a, uh, a previous orchard like that, yeah. that does fit quite nicely that it yeah. could have been the fertilizer or, or other treatments that they were using. Uh, I noticed, too, when you headed to the area that, that was once an orchard, because this is a rather large piece of land. This is, uh, what, 50 acres? Um, yeah, it's it's about, I think about, yeah, 50, 55 acres. Um, it's right there nestled in the town, too. That's another thing. It's nestled right into the town, um, the, you oh, know, wow. the more uh, cityier area. And it's but it's but So it's like a big piece of acreage right in the middle there. So it's so it's been well preserved. A lot right. of old history all around it. So I noticed when you headed out to that field area, you kind of uh, made a beeline right down the center. Yeah, I just went right down the center and kind of you know split it, see what see what I can find, um, and then I I just worked my way back to the fence line. And then from the fence line, I, I went back over that area, but then went all the way across the field. So mm -hmm. I kind of doubled over another area and then went into a new area after I got back through the area I already went over. And the way it sounded from your video, this is uh, pretty much a, a standard procedure for you on hunts. Yeah, I try to kind of do a, it's a, a grid of it and then, you know, um, dig. I dig... If it, it depends on the the permission, I don't I don't like to dig a thousand holes in someone's yard, so I'll try to kind of set like a little, like a you know nickel and up. Like if it's a definite nickel, or I think it's really think it's a nickel, then I'll uh, um, you know uh, dig it up. So. Mm -hmm. So you're just kind of going through, almost in a sense, kind of. Uh cherry picking just to see what comes up on that first pass to know if maybe you want to uh, investigate yeah. that area a little more or in a little more detail? Now, yeah, now since that was a field, I dug just about everything, so I wasn't afraid to dig a million holes there. Um, they were they were really nice about theirs, like go at it, you know, you know, not super real about the yard since that's a field. It's a llama field, actually, so um, they actually raised llamas there now. It's a huge llama farm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you're uh, 
hunting amongst animals again. Oh yeah, these <laughs> they're funny. They're hilarious. They they just sit there and stare at you, and they got all these wacky haircuts. I've never seen anything like it. And uh, I got some pictures I'll have to share. Maybe I'll share after the show. They're they crack me up. Nice. <laughs> uh, now I know too that a lot of times. Uh, Joe will say isn't necessarily the uh, the park and tot lot style of hunter. A, a lot of your uh, areas that you hunt, you do through permission of private properties. Uh, how do you go about getting permissions yourself? Yeah, um, yeah, I do a lot of uh, door knocking and. Uh, I just, you know, go up to the door that I know that's used. Some of these doors, it's hard to tell, and you learn that when you're doing these old Victorian homes. You're like, which of the ten doors do they use? And you're trying to guess, and you finally learn, you know, it's always the one that's back around the back side. It's never the, any of them in the front. They never use those. But I go to the door, and I, I, I knock, and I introduce myself, and I just, you know, tell them uh, what I do, what I, why I do it, and uh, how I do it. And um, I'm just honest with them. Uh, uh, about what I find, and um, most of the time, uh, it, it goes pretty good. You know, so you get your yeses, you get your noes. So it, that's right. how I do it. Do you ever take anything along with you? Possibly, you know, show them. Well, these are the sorts of things that I look for. You know what? I I never did it till recently, and I started doing it, just bringing it just in case. If they ask, like, what do you look? What what are you looking for? And then I'll show them things I found, like. Um, you know, just like inning heads and like, you know, you show them, you know, uh, wee pennies and, and then you show them, I don't mind telling people I found some cool things, you know, I'm not afraid to let people know that, yeah, I could find something really cool in your yard. Most people really, they, they're just like, you know, go ahead, keep it, you know, that they, they don't, they don't ask for it. Um, but you get some people who want to split down the middle, you know, is what it is. Right, or they kind of tell you, well, you can have at it, have fun, but if you find any gold, we get half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I've had, I've had that, and I haven't found very, very much gold. So, you know, it's never on their side. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I just that, found my first piece recently, so. That's, oh, yeah. congratulations! Yeah, and that was, I, I was like, I'm, I'm never gonna get gold. Like, I dig nickel tones. I've got plenty of nickels to prove that, and you know. All the wacky tones, deep, you know, nickel tones. I love that, you know, that I love seeing that VDI um, on the on the screen when it's deep and it's a nickel tone. Like I'm like I'm excited because it could be so many cool things, and if it's deep, you know, it, it could be old. So that that gets my blood going um, seeing those kinds of tones, which also end up being button tones. I love buttons, so. Um, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I recall uh, a while back. I believe that was earlier this summer. You were. What was uh, actually hunting a uh, an old park, I believe, and found a number of uh, great seal buttons. Yeah, um, that was yeah, right in uh, Columbus. Um, this park, the, uh, one was uh, a World War One great seal co button. One was a uh, uh, they said uh, the hat button. What are those called? Like not cappies, but they're I don't I forget what kind of hat hats they wear. But it was a button that goes on there. It was an officer's button because it's – you should see the gold gilt on this thing. It's, it's ridiculous, but that's World War II. Um, I, and I love those. I love getting, you know, relics of all wars, I think. You know, any kind of era like that, I love that history no matter what era. Um, it's exciting. I think it's it's all got a, you know, cool story, so. Absolutely. I agree. Any Anything uh, military uh basically is yeah. just an awesome find i believe yeah um with uh you said that recently you've started carrying items along with you to landowners homes like that uh had they ever asked you prior to that or is this something you just oh well it might be kind of neat to do and then with carrying those along have you noticed that that has changed the ratio of yeses possibly um yeah i uh i i uh i got asked actually after i got them 
ironically, and I was like, wow, like, what's the odds I get asked, and I, I just got them, you know? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got one. Uh, you know, of course, I had them in my pocket, and I was excited to use them. Um, but I was kind of figuring it out, and finally when I got asked, asked for one, I gave one, and um, it got me a yes. And, you know, most people, some people will take them. I have had one taken, and then I call them or uh, – I forget if I call them or text them. And he's like, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, you know, I couldn't get it. So I've gotten yeses and no still from it, but I'd say it definitely helped me get more yeses. Um, I don't know. I think it calms people down. Some people get really excited when they, they're like, I don't know you kind of people, and some people are just like that. And I respect that. So I give them the card, let them know who I am, and I don't, you know, make myself comfortable there. I kind of get on with my thing and go um, if they're like that. And sometimes they'll call you back and it'll be fine. So. Okay, so you also use cards and leave those. Yeah, is that? I thought that's what you were asking. I'm sorry. No, uh, I meant about the, uh, like the the items that you've recovered that you've recently started carrying with you as well. Oh yeah, no that yeah that actually gets people excited because they're like, oh my gosh. Um, and then if I start finding stuff and they're around, I'll show them. And uh, people are, I think they just. I'm not saying everybody sees the honesty, but some people see it, and you can tell them, that, and they they respect that. And those are the people that usually are like, you know, you can you can keep everything. So um, right, and that also helps to get referrals too. Yeah, exactly. You're honest with them, and I think it's just it makes it fun. I think it's cool to make people excited about history and showing them pieces. So um, yeah, it doesn't bother me to do that. Uh, but I've had people that are just kind of. Uh, uh, Rude, and you have people that are like that. Not everybody's, you know, a big uh, pink butterfly, and you know, nice. So, <laughs> there's some, nice uh, analogy. There's some, yeah, there's just some naturally mean rude people out there. So, you you might run into that, but don't let that, you know, uh, turn you away from the hobby. Don't let that get you down. Just, you know, go, go to the next one. You know, if there's history around wherever you're at. Yeah, absolutely. Don't let that discourage. You're not out anything. You've still yep. got everything you did. Yep, exactly. And uh, some people may not realize, but you've actually, even though you've only been in the hobby a few years, you've actually used a number of different machines before you finally kind of settled into what you're using now. Yeah, I uh, worked. Uh, I worked my way up uh, from a, a Ace Two Fifty. Um, and then I quickly got an AT Pro, and I hung out, hung on uh, to that for a while, and I really liked it. And then uh, the uh, it, w it was a great machine. You know, I still would use one now. I, I love the machine, um, respect it very much. Uh, and then, then there was the VX3, and then the E-Track, and then and then what I'm using now, the CTX. But yeah, I, I enjoy the CTX a lot. Any plans on upgrading? Uh, no, I, I can't go. I'm, I'm not working on that budget. So, <laughs> thousand dollars or whatever else. I don't know what I'd go to go to next. I'll be honest with you. I would. I tell you what I would do. Um, I get an E track or I get an AT Pro. So I get. I'd still get one of those as like a backup though. Right. Yeah. So you are certainly, uh, I know when you were on Beyond Sight and Sound before we'd kind of touched on it, and the way it sounds, you are still very much satisfied with the performance you're getting from the CTX. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's a, it's a great machine. I really enjoy it, and um, I didn't know, you know, going in into the uh, Mind Lab series from the E-Track to that if I'd like it or not, and uh, I end up, it ended up clicking with me, so I stuck with it. Very nice. And I'm sure that uh, some people wonder, too, you do a very good job with your videos. What sort of uh, camera do you use? Oh, I use a uh, uh, TG3 Olympus TG3. Uh, it's a great camera. Um, I used to use a GoPro, uh, but yeah, so and I, I moved on from that and just didn't, didn't like it for me, so it just wasn't my thing. So I moved on from that. Uh, to the Olympus, and I like that. I like it a lot better. Yeah, it, it seems to do very, very well for you. Uh, I know that some of the rest of us who do videos always get the questions, you know, oh, you must use a special software or something like that. Uh, what do you use for your video editing? 
No, I use uh, uh, Windows, regular Windows. So, uh, yeah, I'm on the uh, the free train. Yeah, so, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say that seems to be the the standard uh, go-to software for a lot of us. I know Kurt does a great job with his videos. Using yes, he does. Those. Yes, he does. He does a great job. Those people are like, what? You do that on Windows? What? <laughs> yeah. How are you doing that? It's like magic. The free one? Are you sure? <laughs> you mean the upgrade is what you have, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I love it. It works great. It, it's simple. It's uh, I mean, uh, you can do some cool stuff with it for what what you have. So I mean, the, the proof's right there. Kurt makes great videos with it. So. Oh yeah, absolutely, and uh, you you have done a, a very good job with your videos, and it's very very plainly noticeable. Very passionate about the hobby, the history. You do a great job with it, and. Uh, I think, uh, speaking of videos, maybe I'll kind of move along here and let Kurt in to uh, ask a few questions. Uh, good job on your latest video as well there, Kurt. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, man. Definitely. Great video. That was funny. Yeah, it was a, <laughs> it was a funny day. <laughs> yeah. We were hanging out with uh, him. He, he cracks me up. I'm like, why haven't we hunted? I didn't know you were this. You know, you meet people and you're like, "Wow, you're like right there." I had no idea. Oh, Chris! Chris is <laughs> yeah. hilarious, dude. Tell yeah. me about his mannerisms and the stuff that comes out of his mouth. Wait you know what's funny? Next, <laughs> next week's video is freaking insane. <laughs> he He's reminds me of somebody I work with, and that's what cracks me up too. I'm like, "Yeah, wow, <laughs> this guy's I, a twin." Oh, I watched dude. the video probably twice today. It was just there were so many funny spots in it, and that clip of Bill chasing the balloon again. Oh my God! I about fell out of my chair. <laughs> I had to throw it in there again. Oh yeah, how could you forget that? <laughs> That's a sight to see. He's something oh. else. <laughs> yeah, he fu he's funny. He cracks me up. So I got a question for you, Joe. <clears throat> yeah. Um. You still gonna be rubbing up your silvers? I'm pretty sure I handed you a foo foo bottle. <laughs> yeah, I do have that. I actually need to bring my uh, brush too, uh, for other things, obviously. But yeah, I know I need to stop rubbing my silvers. I mean, you can you can do whatever you want with your silvers, and you can <laughs> do whatever you want with that bottle. I'm just saying, man. Uh, every time I see it, I cringe a little bit. <laughs> Especially on the I know. You like how I don't mention born. it. Other people mention it. I don't even mention it. Other people are like, I'm sorry, I'm rubbing. I'm like, yeah, screw it. I don't, I don't even care. Yeah, it's yours. I mean, you do whatever you want. Uh, no, I, I don't know. I just don't – I get so excited. I'm like, oh, what the fuck is it? I just want to – sorry. I just want to see what's underneath it. <laughs> I was just told I'd go blind if I rub it too much, so I used the food oh, bottle. That's a good That's a good incentive. That would scare the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't gone blind yet, so that's Yeah, good. thank God. Man. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm gonna. I'll use it. I'll whip it out for you. <laughs> I mean, you're already doing the weedy fart, which kills yeah. me every time. Yeah, I gotta do that. I try to remember too. Like I gotta do a weedy fart every time. Just, <laughs> I'm into a whole video just weedy farts. One day, <laughs> I've had days like that, so that's, that's all. It still, I pulled like thirty plus in a hunt. It's yeah. disgusting. No that's... silver, but thirty weedies. So <laughs> <I'm gonna laughs> <Right. laughs> it should be like five to one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I was out with uh, Vic, or not Vic, um, Rusty, sorry. Rusty. Um, sure Bill, wasn't Rusty. Sorry? No, go ahead. With Russ, it was Rusty Fawcett, if you remember him from the dig. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> you Bill, mean the real Rusty. Yeah. Rusty Rusty's is cracking. Anyways, we're out hunting, we're having a good time. Towards like all throughout the day, Rusty kept losing his pinpointer. I'm sorry, Rusty, I gotta share this. I don't know if you're here or anybody's here, uh, but I had to share this. Uh, but he kept losing his pinpointer, and he kept he got more and more mad throughout the day. Like he was so ready to go home by the end of the day. It was so sad and depressing because he had a rough day anyways detecting. Like it wasn't giving at all for him. You felt bad for him, and then he kept losing his pinpointer, so he kept adding to it. 
Get that man a tether ring. <laughs> I know. I was like, yeah. I swear I had legs. <laughs> we found it every time, three times. So, um, but yeah, no, it was cracking me up. And he finally, like, what, two days later, a day later, the next, like, week, uh, he was up in that area working. And then uh, Bill had him come out with him, and he found a two-center. And I was like, oh, man, thank God. <laughs> I thought he was going right. to go home. I thought he was going to go home and, like, uh, just like off himself. I know it's supposed to be family oriented, but that that's what I thought he was gonna do. He was so mad. <laughs> so everybody has Go ahead. Go ahead Kurt. Okay. I was gonna say everybody has <laughs> a, a bucket list and uh all that good stuff, but they also have that, that coin that they feel like they should have found that we call the white whale. Oh the white whale, yes. Or not coin, but relic, or do you have that, that that one thing that just haunts you? I know you've recently got those standing quarters out of the way, so. Yeah, um, relic-wise, a three-ringer would be nice. You've um, never no, dug a three-ringer? No, it's it avoids me. So I've been in an area, I've dug buttons, but no three-ringers. Nice. I've watched three-ringers get dug, but, um, uh, and then... That's relic wise, Civil War era, that type. But um, coin wise, um, uh, a like a like a half cent or something, like a seated half cent or seat another seated. I've got, it's not a white whale, and I hate to you know kind of go off topic, but it's another thing. I've Your my curse. first ever silver was a seated dime, and since then I've never gotten a seated, and that was three years ago. So. Mm. Yeah. There's there's more out there for you. I know there is. Dude, but that that's weird. That's a curse, and that's why I think I think it's a curse. Over three years, that's ridiculous. People <laughs> go their whole hunting career and never find a seated. That's true, but but I'm getting lar- like a lot of large scents. Yeah, year, you are. So it's like, why am I not getting seated? So that's all that Ohio is just littered with large scents. I I know. <laughs> I don't get it. It is. <laughs> It's so, I mean, for being, yeah, like, in, you don't, people don't realize how old Ohio is, though. It's been settled since the early 17s, too, so, yeah, you know, I, with, I, with Europeans, I didn't. I didn't realize it until your guys' videos. Yeah. You guys Yeah, were, you think Midwest, well, uh, the camp, you know, mid but, to late 18s, but a lot of early, you know, uh, you get a lot of mid-17s, you know, buttons, a lot of top back buttons and stuff like that. Yeah, Ohio is gorgeous, at least the part that I saw. It was just nothing but rolling farms and country roads. And Isn't it, though? I'm, I'm glad you like it. I'm glad yeah, you I'll, like I'll it. I'll gladly come back, even though i got to drive through Pittsburgh. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> I wish. I hope Rusty hears that or Ron, because they're from Pittsburgh. So Yeah, I think a shot of Pittsburgh in my next video. <laughs> oh, I would say I can't say anything, so I can't go on the topic of Pittsburgh, so. I'm from Ohio, you know, so. But, yeah, that's that's my white whales. Yeah, Civil War bullets are beautiful. Yeah, I think that's just a cool piece of history. Uh, you know, people people are, you know, I, I, I see people that live down in that area where they're just finding them left and right. I mean, you know, oh, what's that one guy, Brian Walsh or something? He's like, oh, here's another 48 three ringers. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay. You know, you always see those people that are getting shit, and you're just like, ugh. But you can also be that person. Some of the stuff you get is another man's treasure too that you don't, you may like, but not like as much as he likes. So yeah, that's like the, the way the way the hobby goes. They're finding civil war bullets like I'm farting at Wheaties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have people in New England are like, ah, oh, another. Ugh, oh, it's a matrix. Spanish silver again. You know, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't let don't let Swansea hear that. I know. He's I gonna know tell somebody. It. He's gonna tell somebody. Uh, three L's he has now. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a real bad problem to have. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> See how's it going, Swansea? Not too bad. How you doing, Kurt? Very good. Hope you're doing good, Swansea. Up there, finding awesome old stuff. Well, that's where one of my questions comes into you, too, as well, Joe. If you could detect anywhere in the continental United States, where would you detect? Huh. Oh, man. Uh, that's a great question. Wow. I would probably go somewhere in New England. I like the New England stuff. I like early um, early America. 
that's my thing. I love early America, you know. Um, but yeah, I would do some kind of virgin uh, cellar hole somewhere. And I know even with virgin, it could be a bust. You never know. Some people just don't drop stuff. <laughs> well, some people didn't have the money to afford a lot of the coins or anything to like that. To drop stuff, well, yeah. There's going to be buttons, that's for sure. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I'll take buttons all day. I'll dig, I'll dig buttons all day at uh, any colonial site. Absolutely. I love that. Love that. That's that's. I never. That's one thing. I'll, I'll be honest. I got in this hobby because you know coins sounded really cool, and I still love coins. But it, buttons has have came up from you know from behind and, and took over. I just love finding old buttons. Um, you still get heart stopper coins, of course, but I still love buttons. Well, you got a you got a question here from Bill in the external there, Joe. He wants to know. He said, "Ask Joe why he keeps tainting all the holes in the button <laughs> foundation with a 30-30. Apparently, it's a story." <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to read it. I need to ask Joe why he keeps tainting all. <laughs> yeah, uh, we were uh, we were at a spot uh, that that deserves the storytelling. It won't be too long, I promise you. But uh, we were we were at a uh, foundation spot uh, that uh, is a known is a you know an area where people ride horses through and um, but yeah anyways uh, we were laughing uh, somebody you know got a signal I went over it was Bill I believe and I, I you know I checked he wanted me to check it so I checked it and then he you know went to get it and it didn't sound as good so but he still dug in he dug in and it ended up being nothing you know, like nail or something, and then he went to another spot, and he had me to check again, and, you know, it was there, and then he checked, and it went weak, weak again, but he still dug in, it was, you know, something bad, and he's like, stop painting the hole, and I'm like, we're up here in the middle of the woods, and people are down, like, over the ways, and you just hear, stop painting the hole, you know, him yelling, so from there on out, we just lost it, uh, and it's just like an inside joke thing, but now everybody knows, but it's hilarious, it makes me laugh so hard every time. <laughs> I got a so question Joe. for you, Joe. I know a while back, uh, not too far back, you guys, uh, I say you guys, it was you and uh, Bill with Ohio Relic Hunting and a few others had done some hunting together, um, I believe over in Old Washington. Um, uh, the question kind of pertains to what would you... Uh, what do you do to try to get the younger generation involved in metal detecting and into saving history? Um, I know you guys had done a little fundraising, got together, and got machines for a, a girl and her father. Can you uh, can you elaborate on that story since it was such a good one? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, it's it's kind of crazy because it, it wasn't planned out. It's not like this. This is something we were going to go to this town and do this. Um, it, it just happened, and it was one of those uh, those instances in your life where you got to change someone else's life. So it was a, it was it was an awesome experience. Um, and it, it wasn't like life changing, but you know it was an, something you hope they'll remember. It was it was a good time. But uh, we were doing a historical dig at this spot, and uh, we end up you know towards the end of the night we end up going down to this uh, part that's kind of the center town area where an old school used to stand and other stuff, but we were down there detecting, and uh, a father and his daughter um, were at the, at the park, and they were, you know, were talking to us, really real interested in it, and uh, uh, that was Adam and Audra, uh, as their names, and Audra uh, showed a lot of interest in, in it, and uh, but yeah, she, she was really, really sweet and, and nice, and was always helping at, you know, at our uh, plugs, and uh, her dad showed his real, real interest, and uh, he helped us also get some permissions and uh, um, just and even offered up to his, uh, his own home uh, for us to uh, stay at because we were up there for the weekend doing a dig and uh, um, so yeah we we kind of all talked and figured you know we want to want to do something for them and uh, you know went from there uh, set up a fundraiser and get money so we can do it so it was a, it was a great experience and what did y'all end up actually being able to do for them? Uh, we got them both detectors uh, and uh, uh, all the gear they would need. Um, we got Adam an AT Pro and we got uh, her uh, White's Coin uh, Master. Um, cool thing about that um, is White's actually 
donated the Coin Master to the cause themselves. So that's really cool. Uh, I literally talked to him on Facebook, and they didn't even asked question. They said all they asked for was my address. So um, wow. that was pretty awesome. Uh, that is awesome when you have a manufacturer like that jump out and help somebody. That's oh yeah, I mean just completely awesome. like, oh, what what can we do? And um, uh, I told him we had we had uh, detectors chosen, but then I was like, but we were looking at a White's Coin Master and. And uh, uh, she's like, "What's your address?" You know, I'll I'll message you. And she messaged me and asked. So it was it was really nice. Um, but yeah, and then we uh, saved up. We got a go, uh, GoFundMe, and I mean, everybody knows what those are by now. Um, uh, but yeah, we saved up and spent the exact amount we had in the GoFundMe. Spent it all out. Uh, uh, we were doing really good, getting close to the deadline, and uh, Kurt came in with a great video that kind of pushed it over and beyond, actually. So. Um, props to Kurt from um, the Hoover Boys for doing that. Uh, that was awesome. That that just we were like so pumped because then right then and there we can go shopping. You know we're shopping for people's what yeah. we're doing basically. So it was it was a blast. It felt like we were getting our stuff. You know what I mean? You but, should probably uh, give a shout out to uh, Treasure Hunter Supply too. Yeah, and Treasure Hunter, Hunter Supply was a. Uh, uh, <laughs> they yeah they they got us the stuff and Joe from there actually that works there donated a uh, um, pinpointer, and so did Rob, and uh, um, um, I'm forgetting, it's been a long week, <laughs> uh, Rob and Gary uh, donated a pinpointer, so that was really cool, and uh, they also donated pins from their group, uh, their uh, uh, What's their little their dig group they do? They do awesome historical stuff for their historical societies too. Those guys are really cool guys, uh, really good guys for the um, for the uh, hobby. So well, I know you go out and you do a lot of different group hunts or hunting with other people in uh, in a lot of historical society type hunts for the the historical societies in the different counties up there. What um is that all mainly through? Uh, was it Ohio Relic Hunters group with Bill Morris on that, or, or yeah, the, the the one the one in particular, uh, uh, we're at another town doing a Morgan's Raid uh, hunt. Um, yeah, that's through uh, uh, Bill organized that, so that was all uh, Bill starting and Bill Marsh, and yeah, he did a great job organizing that and kind of getting kind of getting the team together and uh, talking to they talked to the uh, uh, historical society. Mm -hmm. They backed us up. Um, at, you know, it, it felt nice. We had the historical side on our side, when we'd ask private permissions. Um, so that that always helped. Uh, so yeah, that was awesome. Bill did a great job. We're still, you know, going at it there. So whatever we find, we, uh, we did a a bit or Bill did a video, I believe it was, of uh, uh, meeting them and showing them everything. And um, the, the one guy that's uh, in charge of from the historical society and gave him all the stuff that we found um, and he said we were welcome back anytime and you know so that, that was awesome it, it felt uh, like we did something for the town a lot of the stuff that went to the historical society and also to the uh, um, <clears throat> county museum so pretty cool I got a couple questions for you Jeff yeah uh, your oldest coin my oldest coin um, is uh, the um, a, I got a state copper. Yeah, the um, state. New Jersey state copper. Um, I just got that this year. Yeah, seven, okay, seventeen eighty-eight, I believe, is the what variety it is. How about? Um, good. There's a guy out there that's like on. He's on uh, Facebook. He's like amazing at knowing them. He's like literally a professional. Uh, he he. I actually, as soon as I posted, this guy got a hold of me, and he actually keeps track of a uh, um, like a pattern per se of, of jerseys found. Um, and he said that I, I, I'm, you know, obviously in a low percentile area where you would find something like that. So he, it's cool that he does that. I think that's really cool. That is awesome. Yeah, you get to find out like how these things got there and where they got there. I'd love you know, to see his graph. Sorry. So I'd love to see his. Uh... His chart. Yeah, me too. See that pattern. Uh, me too. <laughs> That's some cool stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it, it made sense where I got it at, though. Um, 
when I got it, I had no idea what I had. Uh, kind of had to be careful. I mean, we knew it was a large copper, but didn't, had no idea what it was. And uh, more clean, and then you know, barely cleaned off the dirt as much as you know, as little as you can, so you can show what you you can before you rub anything off. Um, and just you know, I took the pictures as some people saw, and uh, someone mentioned it, and then I looked at it and looked uh, looked up. Uh, what a New Jersey looked like because I had no idea, and I was like, "Wow, that's exactly what it is." How about oldest silver? Um, my oldest silver, uh, I think it's my Trime. Yeah, uh, I got a Trime. Um, sadly, can't say a date, but I know that beats. You're seated. Yeah, I think it beat my seated. My seated yeah, is in 1875, so. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I think they stopped making the trime in like '73 or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's my oldest. I mean, but I got a trime, so I can't I can't complain. I'm happy about that. <laughs> Do you have a find, or what are your like favorite finds, or the things that you just cherish the most? That you're just like, I can't believe I found that, or you just look at it like every other day. <laughs> <laughs> so to hold it like a baby. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you like have your kid and then you have your fine. You know? <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I got. Um, I would have to say, uh, I love my. I, lo I said I love buttons and I love my script eye button. I have um, that. That really just is cool because it's not only uh, history. It's for me. It's local history. So. Um, local military history and old history, so I love that. Uh, that's the kind of era I love. Um, but yeah, it's uh, a script I War of 1812 button. Yeah, that thing's gorgeous. Yeah, it's uh, script, infantry, script I infantry, sorry. Yeah. But yeah, thanks. It's pewter, and I had no idea what I had once again uh, till I posted it, and people were like, I was like, oh yeah, I got a few buttons and, you know, a couple of relics, and you know, it wasn't it wasn't an extremely crazy day that day. It was just a bunch of buttons, but I still love buttons. And they're like, Joe, that's not just a button. So <laughs> <laughs> I was well, like, that, oh man. <laughs> that's that's the other fun fun part of the hobby is getting actual do research and figuring out what these things are and Yeah. Then when you you do especially that item, you're like, What is this? And then somebody yeah. right off the bat recognizes it. You're like, Oh my god. Yeah. I have that. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. It's insane. I really loved, uh, was it your Maryland uh, cuff button? Yeah, that's a beauty. That's cool. The pictures do it no justice. It's, it's uh, gorgeous. You can never take a good picture of a button, man, because it's never the same. It's never, it just isn't. No, not not yeah. in real life. And I, I'm sure there's cold guilt under there, but I just love it the way it is. I, oh. It's dusty. Dirty yeah. Dusty. Oh. Dude, when I got the pewter button, I had no idea they were so fragile until uh, yeah. Dave Wives was like, you know, everybody's like, rub it down with everything, anything you can find, you know what I mean? But Dave Wives was like, uh, spray uh, some hairspray on it. So that's what I did, and it sealed it right up. Nice. So, yeah. I was like, everybody's freaking your out. your hairspray or the wife's? <laughs> no, the wife's. <laughs> she's, like, what you, no, she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm like long story. <laughs> long story. <laughs> you had no idea. You, you won't get it. <laughs> no, I, I was like, yeah, sp spraying it, trying to keep you know the water out from it. You, you'll understand one day. <laughs> hey, Joe, uh, <clears throat> Bill's asking, what about the Excelsior New York militia? Oh, yeah, store? no, that's, that is an amazing find. Um, yeah. Uh, with, <clears throat> with its... Uh, uh, you know, eagle. I, I I love eagles. You know, anything with the eagles on it, it's really cool. Um, to me. How can you yeah. not? What's that? But how can you not? I know. And just I just love that it's standing on like a rock. You know what I mean? It's just so cool looking, and it's you know from the era I like early you know early 1800s. You know, colonial era. You know, but uh, that's just yeah, really cool to me. To follow up on that, Joe, the last question I really had for you was, what else do you do to preserve your relics, and how do you display them? Um, actually, I got uh, a display case I got uh, not too long ago from uh, Stephen uh, Finnamore. Uh, he, he does display cases, just like a small-time guy. Um, I met over Facebook and, you know, through metal detecting and stuff on uh, Facebook, and he uh, built me one, uh, like a... 18 slot 
um, mahogany wood uh, with like a, a it's a two tone trim. So he he did that for free for me, just like because he knew my channel was two tone Joe. So he did like a, a different colored trim on the you know mahogany. Um, I forget the name of the wood, but it's it's a beautiful case, glass case front with knob. So now is that handy where you can show us? Um yeah, I can grab it back here. Hopefully my camera will get it. It's a phone camera, so it's not amazing. Get it. Just don't drop it. Yeah, I just haven't uh Right. I haven't uh uh hung it up. So I I wanna do it but I just haven't yet. So I don't know if I can turn this around or not. Uh yeah there. I think. Yeah. So there's the case. He did a star, I thought that was cool. Kind of patriotic. Um, he he did beautiful work, I think. Um, glass case. Yeah, I got some nice. some of my favorite stuff in there. Um, stuff obviously, I have not dug a silver dollar. These are silver dollars I won uh, on contests and stuff. So I just put them in there because they're cool. I mean, there's a display case from not just for dug items. So, um, but yeah, so yeah, it's a beautiful case. I'm still waiting on my first cradle bell. I'm eyeballing those things. Oh yeah, I uh, I, I got these recently, and they're my favorite ones because I got they're a solid. Beautiful. I always want to get the ones with the solid piece up top. I've gotten I've gotten a, a bunch of them, but none with solid pieces up top. So it drove me nuts, and I finally got them. You know what's cool? Is nice. When you clean them out, you know some of them don't have them, um, but these had them. And, you know, you think about it, these haven't been rung in, I don't know, at least over 100 years. So um, it's pretty cool to get those and then get them ringing again, knowing that they yep. haven't been in that long a time. Do they have iron dinglers in them? I, that's what I think. From what I've experienced on all of them, they're all iron dinglers. <laughs> but when you can clean them out and get them to ring again, oh. it's like music to your ears the first time it rings. Yeah, they sound good. Too bad getting up on it, but yeah, yeah, I know. I, I I could clean it more. I just haven't. So it's got the numbers on the bottom. I think it says five. That's pretty cool. Some stuff I just like to keep a little dirty. I like this. This is really cool. This is yeah. a lock key for a railroad. Losing one of these was kind of a big deal. <laughs> so someone has gets one of those, gets a hold of one of those, they got control of the tracks. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, some cool stuff in here. I don't know if anybody has any questions on anything. Uh, that's a New York button. Never thought I'd get one of those in Ohio. One of my favorite uh, Civil War buttons I got. So there you go. Nice. Yeah, uh, Kurt. Actually, you uh, talk about using just very little. Uh, what is it? Uh, lime juice or lemon juice? Lemon juice, lemon juice. Lime lemon juice. juice oh, and, uh, said it. Yeah. That uh, that definitely got that gold shine. Some people use CLR. Some people use uh, what's it? Uh, metal jelly or something. Yeah, that's the ex that that I, I've heard people use or talk Aluminum about jelly, jelly stuff. The yeah. jelly is what scares me. Like hearing people say it's jelly, I'm like I don't know if I want jelly. Well, they're like test it on a real small spot first. Like I don't want to mess the button up at all. So. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Make sure I've got this up right. Well, and the easy. aluminum jelly usually isn't near as aggressive as the navel jelly. Yeah, that too. Different type of acid. That's the Excelsior button. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not trying to trying to take up time. If you get more questions, whatever you uh, whatever you want to ask. Is it family? Oh. Can't ask those questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know you really enjoy digging buttons, and uh, you find your fair share of silver coins and and Indians and stuff like that too. But when you go out hunting, is there like that one particular item that just really gets you going? Where you're going out and yeah, I can't believe I found another one. You know, is it? 
silver coins that really get you or the button or um it depends on the site um i guess uh you know i don't go i really don't go out expecting to find anything anymore um because i've been surprised uh lately with a lot of uh pretty cool finds i try not to expect so much cuz i think uh that can get you down sometimes if you start expecting too much so you so, failure yeah right I, but you know, you come, you're you're going along, and all of a sudden, you recover this particular sort of target, and it's okay. like, yes, I found another one. Oh you know, yeah, maybe it's I, a token, maybe it's silver. It's funny you said. You, first thing you said, tokens. I love finding tokens lately. I found <laughs> some really cool tokens. So, I really like the tokens I've found lately. Um, hmm. I'm trying. To... And you've found some nice old ones too. Uh. Yeah, I found some uh, um, some uh, local tokens. That that's what really gets me the local history too. Since I'm in an area that has some great history, uh, uh, I love finding that local stuff. You know, it, that really gets me excited. I found one for a Mount Vernon uh, um, golf club. I know that's old because there's there's no Mount Vernon golf club, and it's, it was good for five cents. So at the bar. So if you can. Tell me what's good for five cents at the bar anymore, and how long ago you know you could get something for five cents at the bar. That's for the bowl of peanuts. Yeah, that's it right there, actually. Five cents for the free bowl of peanuts. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I love tokens. Tokens are are awesome. Come on. There we go. Yeah. I like those five cent ones. Those are really cool. Yeah, it's a nice one. Definitely. Um, and then kind of like the unexpected, uh, like that. I didn't know what it was. I mean, to some people, it's, oh, okay, it's a shell casing, whatever. But it's a Spencer casing, so I thought that was really cool. Find that. <sighs> yeah. All right, Joe, what's your all-time favorite find? Not best find, not oldest find. What's your all-time favorite thing you've ever found? Uh, my all-time favorite, um, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I got to do it. That, like, you hit me with the nuke right up right up front. Um, I love, I, I, I got to say, my I like my button because it's military. I love military, so. Uh, you just don't find you got you got to really do your research in Ohio. You know you got just different patterns throughout the country, military wise. You got a lot of military, you know, Civil War obviously in the South. So you know, in Ohio we're kind of like in a no man's land kind of area. There's a lot of history up north. I'm in the central area, so um, there's a lot of history down south. So it's kind of how they kind of came into Ohio it was like a big sea. So, but yeah. Besides that elusive gold coin, what is at the top of Joe Toff's bucket list? Um, right now, uh, I'd like to get Spanish silver. Would be nice. Yeah, amen to that. Yeah, I think that would be cool. It can um, be done in your area. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's been proven time and time again. So you just got to go look for it. Uh, if Eddie can do it, anybody can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I gotta get picky real quick though. Seventeen hundred Spanish silver is what I'm after. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? He, he got first. so close. He got so close. He's like he's like, if I got a bitch, it's gotta be that is a seventeen I got an eighteen hundreds and he's like, but other than that, I loved it. So <laughs> So funny. It's so true though. Yeah. A couple of years ago, a few miles from me, we had an eight real dug. Oh wow. That's ridiculous. It's like a bar of silver, isn't it? Right. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Like, <laughs> holy cow! Oh, that is funny. I mean, I'll take I'll take any Spanish silver, but I love the design of the pistorian. Yeah. Oh early. yeah. Those pistorians with the cross and ugh, <laughs> gorgeous. They are beautiful coins, beautiful coins. But uh, I mean, I'd I'd still take an 1800s. I'm not gonna not gonna complain. Absolutely. Yeah. I do have a real, but it's a quarter cut. It's a it's a 
copper quarter real, eighteen twenty. Oh wow, that's still so very cool. cool. It, it, it's a coin cool. I've never seen anybody else dig. That is, yeah, eighteen twenty. Yeah, you don't hear about that. I don't hear. I, it seems like that. Like a lot of people have, you know, more. I see more seventeen hundred Spanish silver myself online. People finding, but I've never found an eighteen hundred Spanish silver. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Well, that's that's too new for you, Swans. Yeah, that's yeah. that's new media. Yeah, he's like seventeen hundred. Do you have a I remember my swans? first one. I don't have any pistarines. I've got the pillars and waves. Nice. Pillars right, and I'm, waves. I'm done talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're done. End of conversation right there. Yeah, that's it, Swansea. No more. Swans <laughs> muted. Right. <laughs> uh, Kirk, that's well, all over your area, man. That's got to be somewhere all over there, I would think. Yeah. Uh, a guy that I met the other day, he wanted me to put a foo-foo sticker on his bottle, so he met up with me. The next day, he shows me a, a, T, a 1750 one real. Wow. Yeah. And wow. a guy in my club, two months ago, he found a half real. Last month, he found a half real. And I just oh. post a picture of a a eighth cut, eighth real, like a, a piece of eight. Wow. Yeah. So when you met up with this guy to to put that sticker on his bottle and he showed you that, did you say, oh, that's it, no foo-foo sticker for you? <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and, like, the, the next day he sends me a picture of a uh, Trime. So he's got a little hot spot, some really, really old form. Well, that's another question for you too, Joe, then, at your point too. You, I know you like you do the cellar holes and these old places like that. Do you ever farm hunt, like fields? You know what? I just started uh, tackling that. Um, I got uh, possible permission coming up for one. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, it, it's it's new to me actually. I, I do a lot more in the woods. Uh, what I've had a hard time doing is a lot of them are uh, leased out uh, or owned by somebody else, and uh, it can be tricky sometimes. I'm sure people deal with that who normally feel hunt anyways, but for me it's something new that I've ran into and I'm just kind of getting used to it. Uh, but I, I would love to do it more often. Um, as you know, it's all about doing your research there, finding home sites that are in fields, you know, that are now fields. So that's those are usually the promising uh, field field hits I, is from what I've learned. So. Um, if you had to give one piece of advice to a new detectorist in the hobby, what would it be? Um, uh, I would say, from what my experience, from what I have, you know, the little experience I have is, uh, uh, get a machine that you like, um, stick to settings that you like, and, uh, you gotta sometimes to get the good stuff. You gotta put a little more work into it. Um, after you get learning your machine at the parks and stuff, get out there, ask permissions, um, learn from other people, learn from people who've been doing it for a long time. Uh, respect those people, and they usually can give, learn, teach you tricks of the trade and uh, things that help you get some nice stuff. So that's what I've learned. That's what I would tell people uh, getting into it uh, that are new. Awesome. Um, we're right over the uh, the hour mark, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the live portion off. Um, thanks to all of you for coming on, Joe. Thank you especially. Uh, yeah, thanks. We were supposed to get you on once before, and then stuff happened. It didn't come through, but uh, I'm I'm honored to actually finally get you on here. Um, hey, I mean, thank you, Swansea and Josh. Always, um, guys in the external. If you're not watching Wednesday night. Uh, listening to Beyond Sight and Sound on Thousand Mics, you need to do so. It's an amazing show. Um, if uh, Kurt, as always, thanks for coming out and joining us. Um, always an honor to have you on, sir. My pleasure. I only have you one know. thing to ask, and that's uh, add a little disclaimer at the front of your videos. If 
that's going to be super hilarious like this last one, so I don't choke on food again. <laughs> next, uh, next week's video has got some really funny parts. It, it's it's the uh, it's the Ohio the the big dig. Yeah. I mean, might want to strap that. yourself into your chair for that one, Utah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, wait, waiting on that. Game. I mean, there's, there's a couple really great finds, and there's some just hilarious moments. I think they're hilarious. You, you big know, movie I, producer. Yeah. <laughs> you um, are. Well, thanks, guys, for coming on. It's always an honor to have you on here. Uh, Swansea, thanks for all your work and help again with the external. Guys in the external, thank you for coming out and watching. Um, if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be having a chat anyway. So, thanks, uh, external. Yeah, thanks for coming out and hanging out with us. And, uh, external. Hopefully we'll see you all next week. Thank you.